with a gun here. Coming back and I'm gonna do a little bit of a revisit on an item that I just acquired a couple of few weeks ago. And that would be the shorty stock from Q. Now I uploaded the install video and gave you my first impressions. And that was quick and dirty, but I've since had this gun to the range to test it out and see if it was gonna work. And so I wanna give an update on that and go over a couple of other details that I kinda of did not touch on in my install video. Show you how this compares to the actual Honey Badger stock. And so you could see a little bit of the difference in the dimensions and stuff. Cause at a glance, if y'all think that by putting this on your AR that you've essentially made yourself a budget Honey Badger, you're close but no cigar. So we're gonna touch on that. But first things first, how did it work? And I'm gonna say, I'm happy to report that the gun actually cycled pretty damn good. I tried my uh, really old supply of 208 grain subsonic ammo, which with the Maxim Defense stock on here, the PDW, uh, that did not work in this gun. It would not cycle the action on this gun anymore. Something about the buffer and the spring. But in this particular gun, with this particular stock, it cycled that same ammo just fine. So that was one problem solved. That was a big hurdle. Now, I'm gonna say that I did attempt to get some sexy me shooting the gun footage at the range. But uh, number one, I suck at filming myself. And number two, I was very poorly equipped and only had a douchey little tripod thingy to put my phone into and uh, it did not actually angle it right. So I'm gonna roll in the footage, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it that it is this gun because you're only gonna see the magazine pretty much, I think, sticking out. And I suck, I'm sorry, but you'll hear it going bang. And that's the evidence that the gun actually shoots with this particular configuration. And I did actually ended up running a mag of supersonic ammo through this, and that had some punch to it. This is a eight inch barrel or a nine inch, I have to remember, and does not have an adjustable gas block. This is just a BCM gas block on here. It's one of their low profile things. And I kept the silencer on there because I never take the silencer off of this gun. And uh, I thought it was actually another magazine of the Subsonics because it had the Amax bullets in it. And that's exactly what my Subsonics have, but it was loud and it kind of kicked. So that tells me that they were probably an expensive supersonic load that I was too stupid to know that I'd put into the gun. Hey man, I'm a genius, all right? So uh, either way, um, it cycled those just fine too, which uh, I didn't have any problems with this one with supersonic ammo when I was using the Maxim Defense stock. So that was not a surprise, except the fact that I blew through probably 
uh, $50 worth of friggin' ammo uh, by accident. Either way, so the gun does shoot, and that was awesome. So I'm going to leave this guy on here, and I may or may not spray paint the guy, and, you know, we'll go from there. But So, length of pull. We're going to talk about that. Make sure I'm in frame as much as I can be. And we're going to measure it out. So your overall length of pull, approximately 10 inches on this guy. And that is actually longer than the honey badger. To prove it, I'm going to overlay. Line it up as best as I can. But you're going to see, hopefully, that, well, take my word for it, I got the measuring tape. It's about, it's about one inch longer uh, than the honey badger stock for length of pull. So keep that in mind. Because as it is, the honey badger stock was a little too long for my wife to shoot comfortably. It's only open or closed. Keep that in mind. You got 10 inches of length of pull here. And just to make sure that my math is roughly close. Yeah, it's just a little over nine inches here on the honey badger. So there's that. That's one difference. You get an extra length, uh, a little bit more length. Some people might like that. I don't know. It doesn't seem to bother me because I'm a pretty tall dude. The other aspect that is actually very different between the two is that the Q Honey Badger stock is meant to rapid deploy. So you don't have to engage the button in order to deploy the stock. It's meant so that you're jumping out of your vehicle or whatever and you need to rapidly get into the fight. So you just yank it. Giggity, giggity, giggity. You do not get that feature with their shorty stock. This guy is locked in the closed position, so you could probably pull it open, but uh, you ain't gonna be too happy with yourself after that. So keep that in mind. I don't know that that actually matters to anybody. I just noticed it because I actually have a honey badger, and so it was something that dawned on me and I was farting around with the gun one day and realized hey wait a minute I can't do that so uh last thing would be the cheek weld and um it is not as uncomfortable as it could be but it's also not as comfortable as if you're rubbing your face on a magpul stock or something for one you only have this area now this is a little bit longer again then what you get on the honey badger if you can see you really only get uh less than four inches about four inches or so of surface on the honey badger to as a cheek weld so a lot of people have complained that this isn't necessarily all that great because you basically got to have your nose touching the charging handle and anybody who's ever shot a trijicon acog eh, you probably had your face pressed up against the charging handle anyway because those things have zero eye relief well from the the pad you get about five inches so you get an extra inch of surface area in terms of the length of the area for you to put your cheek for the cheek weld it's also wider and i don't know how well that's going to come out but uh you know you've got it's got an angle and a slope but this this thing's got a little bit more girth here than the honey badger one um it's not going to be as evident but you know this whole thing because the rails are going into recesses on the upper it doesn't have to flare out quite as much whereas on this one they had to flare it out anyway so that gives you the added benefit of having a little bit more place to put your big fat cheek meat stability um this thing is not stable enough for you to take you know great accurate shots but that's not the point of this thing so if you're putting this on a 16 inch barreled upper just because you want to be able to compress that thing and make it a little bit more squishy uh, I mean, you do you, man. I ain't gonna freaking complain. Everybody knows you never go full retard. But the purpose of this guy makes a lot of sense. It's on a SBR, 
or pistol. And so you can keep this thing nice and tight. It's lightweight. We already pointed that out in the unboxing. And this thing is stupid lightweight. And it really does change the balance of the gun. Again, I got this heavy ass 762 SDN6 suppressor from AAC on the end. So this gun is already muzzle heavy, but now there's zero weight in the ass end. And so this thing is very nose heavy. But overall, it's still very lightweight. I mean, this is a nice compact handed package. And I really do enjoy the feel and the balance of it. But stock feels, eh, I wouldn't go, you know, using it to club open a door or anything like that. But uh, uh, I think it'll probably take a lot more abuse than I'm giving it credit for. Because it ain't flimsy. I, I was dogging on Q for taking forever to release this thing. And they finally do, and it works. And I'm going to say it, that anytime anybody's asked Q, what's the ETA on when you're going to start shipping this and that and the other thing, they basically say, go fuck yourself. And they say, we'll start releasing shit when it's ready because we don't want to release stuff and then have to do a recall because shit ain't working. So they took the time, they sorted through it, and this thing feels good. It works. The buffer that they put in here actually works. And I am going to do one last thing too, because I want to check. So one of the big things that I complained about with the Maxim was that it would not cycle this particular gun when I used subsonic ammo, a specific type of subsonic ammo, like cheap shit. And quite frankly, I'm of the mindset that if your gun doesn't cycle the ammo that you need to shoot, then your gun's useless as tits on a bolt. Here's the spring and the buffer that comes with the Q-Kit. And this is a spring and a buffer that the Maxim offers. Now this is their H2 buffer. I had an H1 buffer and I also had their version of the silent capture spring that you can buy directly from Maxim Defense as well. And neither one of these worked. The H1 buffer did not work, the H2 buffer did not work, and this did not work. But this works. And this is not marked with a weight, a buffer weight, but it's lighter than this H2, so it's probably closer to an H1. Well, it is longer than the Maxim spring. This is the only difference between the two systems, really. It's the heart and soul of it, because otherwise it's just a two, right? So the only other thing could be so if you thread this in all the way and it goes flush to the receiver, the Q tube is just a touch longer. Q spring is significantly longer, at least an inch. So I don't know, why does this one work and this one doesn't? Well, if I'm sure if you ask Q, they're gonna say that it's all about engineering and that Maxim Defense is just a bunch of junk. But that's because Q are kind of assholes. And uh, I guess they have the right to be though, because this one does work and this one does not. And this shit was expensive, it's heavy, all the bits and pieces that I tried to buy to make it work are also heavy and also expensive. So people are going to bitch about this one. I think it's 350 bucks. Are you okay? Mm, I'm fine. I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. Which at face value, that's expensive. But this thing works. It looks good. It feels good. And it fucking works. So... Is it worth 350 bucks? That's for you to decide. For me, I love it. I'm glad I bought it. So that's that. I'm also gonna apologize because I did not bother to script any of this stuff up. I was just kind of going on the fly. And uh, so if I babbled a little too much, I apologize for that. I'll edit it as much as I can, try and throw in the funnies here and there to keep y'all entertained. But that's all I got for now. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out Douchebag's Brother Dick using the link in the video description. I don't know. It's down that way, yonder. And uh, remember, 
I don't know who you are out there, but I got to go.